Good evening and welcome to another edition of Jay's Retro Toys and Games. It's episode 52 for Friday, March 10th, 2023. We hope that you're getting ready for another exciting weekend of relaxation and stuff. But we've got a toy tonight that we're going to be talking about for those girls who grew up after they finished playing with their Barbie dolls, they still wanted to play with something else. Well, we're going to be talking about an 80s toy that's been active since 1981. A toy line and media franchise developed by the American toy company Hasbro. They were developed by Bonnie Zachero, Charles Mushinger, and Steve DeAngo. And the, the toy was featured colorful bodies, manes, and a unique symbol on one or both sides of their flanks. Such symbols are referred to in the three most recent incarnations as cutie marks. You probably figured out that <laughs> uh, as soon as I said cutie marks. That's right. They've been revamped several times with new and more modern looks to continue their appeal to the market. With each new look called a generation by the show's collectors and fans. The franchise is mainly targeted at young girls, although in the 2010s it gained a cult following by an unintended audience of adults, mostly male fans. And featuring the original toy that was introduced in 1981, the franchise was launched in 82 and the line became popular during the 80s. The original toy line ran from, line ran from 1982 to 1992 in the States and to 1995 globally. Two animated specials, an animated feature-length film, and two animated television series produced during the period up until 1992. The first incarnation's popularity peaked in 1990, but the following year Hasbro decided to discontinue the toy line due to increased competition. 150 million of these toys were sold in the 80s. They were revived in 1997, but these toys proved unpopular and were discontinued before the turn of the century in 1999. And the brand saw a more popular revival in 2003 with toys that more closely resembled the original toy line, which sold approximately 100 million of them globally by 2010. And then Hasbro launched the fourth incarnation in 2010, which started with the animated series. And then, well, the brands grossed over $650 million in retail sales in 2013, over a billion annually. 2014 to 2015 and they're launching a fifth generation of the toys that started two years ago i i don't think for what it's i, I think pretty much you understand who i'm talking about right now right we're talking about my little pony that's right coming up next on jay's retro toys and games <laughs> is on the plate for tonight's retro toy and we're looking forward to this long history of this particular toy that has been around since 1981 40 42 years they've been in the in the in the realm and uh, like I said the popularity of the toy is just fantastic still being talked about this year and we're going to look at it right now so the history starts off with My Pretty Pony. That was the name of it. It's a pony figurine introduced by Hasbro in 1981 that was created by illustrator Bonnie Zachero and sculptor Charles Muchinger. My Pretty Pony is a 10-inch tall hard plastic figurine that can wiggle its ears, swish its tail, and wink one eye. The original My Pretty Pony was followed by My Pretty Pony and Beautiful Baby, which came with an additional smaller baby pony figure. This was followed by pink and yellow versions of the original that have the now hallmark symbol on the pony's backsides, 
which preceded the My Little Pony figurines. After the relative lack of success of the My Pretty Pony toy line, then Hasbro introduced six smaller and colorful versions of the toy in 82, sold under the title My Little Pony. The toy line led to many more merchandise under the My Little Pony brand, which later became unofficially known as the Generation 1 or G1 of My Little Pony among collectors. This incarnation ended in 1992 in the United States, but was marketed internationally until 1995. Animations from mid-1980s, that's the My Little Pony animated special, Escape from Katrina, My Little Pony the Movie, and the segment with My Little Pony and Friends anthology series, My Little Pony Tales from 1992, accompanied the lineup. The 97 incarnation was marketed by Hasbro as Friendship Garden and designated Generation 2 by collectors. They were manufactured in redesigned poses with jewel eyes and turning heads and are smaller, slimmer, and longer legged than their 1982 counterparts. The line was not successful in the U.S., and then it was discontinued in 1999, although it continued overseas for several years. Since the second generation was more popular in Western Europe, Hasbro continued to produce and sell them in Western Europe after 1998. Most were Earth ponies, but a few unicorns were made internationally. And although no Pegasus ponies were made, some adults had clip-on wings. In the early 2000s, several unicorns with clip-on wings called the Magic Unicorns were made. Two baby ponies were introduced, and none of the baby ponies were sold in the United States. In Europe, the main location was renamed Ponyland instead of Friendship Gardens, and were discontinued with the inception of the G3 toy line in 2003. Many ponies released in the last years of the line are considered rare, and a number of play sets were introduced, including a mansion and a castle. Some of the licensed merchandise released in Europe included beanbag plushes, magazines, clothing, perfume, wrapping paper, and coloring books. And a CD-ROM game for PC, Friendship Gardens, was also released, which involved taking care of a pony and playing games along the way. Some Generation 2 ponies were sold as detachable keychains, including Morning Glory, Sundance, Lightheart, and Ivy. Each pony comes with a comb attached to her neck by a string. The back of the package says, My Little Pony logo and pony names are trademarks of Hasbro Inc. Copyright 1998. They were produced under license by Fun for All Corporation and made in China. My Little Pony Friendship Gardens is a virtual pet game developed by Art Tech Studios and published by Hasbro Interactive. The third incarnation of My Little Pony, which is often unofficially referred to as Generation 3 or G3 by collectors, began in 2003. The revamped line of dolls was targeted to a younger audience than the previous lines. And before the generations end in 2009, there were at least two minor revamps. A series of direct-to-video animated films, mostly produced by SD Entertainment, accompanied the lineup. The next incarnation of My Little Pony, unofficially known as the Generation 4, was launched in 2010. It is set in a fictional location named Equestria, and the main characters include Twilight Sparkle, Spike, Rainbow, Dash, Pinkie Pie, Applejack, Rarity, and Fluttershy. Television series My Little Pony Friendship and Ma is Magic, theatrical film My Little Pony the Movie, as well as other related media accompany the current lineup. This era generated a fandom among grown ups with the success of the television series. My Little Pony Equestrian Girls, the anthropomorphic spin off, was launched in 2013. My Little Pony Pony Life, a spin off comedy series, launched in 2020 featuring a new chibi animation style well Hasbro announced the start of the current generation 5 toy line in February of 2021 with a 3D CG animated film produced by Entertainment One and animated by Boulder Media and a follow up television series unlike previous generation changes which have generally featured a completely new set of characters Generation 5 will build upon the world and stories established in Generation 4 from Friendship is Magic, but will include a time jump as to introduce new characters and themes. 
According to Hasbro's Emily Thompson, vice president of global, global brand management for Entertainment One, the new line is aimed at Generation Alpha, which has a higher emotional intelligence, and they expect a lot more from their entertainment. To that end, the themes of the show will be aimed around diversity and inclusion, but will still include nods and Easter eggs to the prior generation. The film and series takes place sometime after the end of Friendship is Magic, where friendship and harmony have been replaced by paranoia and mistrust, and the various pony species have segregated into their own tribes. The main characters of Generation 5 includes Sunny Star Scout, a female earthy pony, Izzy Moonbow, a female unicorn, and Hitch Trailblazer, a male earth pony, alongside Pegasus siblings Pip Petals and Zip Storm. The film was originally slated for theatrical release by Paramount Pictures, but the release was canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. It was sold to Netflix, with the film's release date being set on September 24th of 2021. Netflix also greenlit its follow-up CG animated series, which will also debut on the streaming service. And during Hasbro's investor event in February of 2021, Entertainment One president of family brands, Avalor Dumont, announced that a 44-minute special was also in the works for Netflix. The film was succeeded by a special streaming television series titled My Little Pony, Make Your Mark in May and September 22, 2022, respectively, and a Christmas-themed special titled My Little Pony, Winter Wish Day in November on Netflix. A YouTube-exclusive series titled My Little Pony, Tell Your Tale premiered in April of 2022. All right. My Little Pony toys drew the attention of collectors from their initial release. Media coverage in the 2000s reported on collectors' conventions, finding it odd that adult women are interested in My Little Pony. The 2004 My Little Pony Collectors Convention reportedly had only one man among the attendees. When updating the toy line, Hasbro reassured collectors that it will produce My Little Pony editions for collectors. And despite Hasbro's target demographic of young girls and their parents, the fourth incarnation of the franchise became a cultural and internet phenomenon as the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic television series generated an unexpected fandom with many male fans between 13 and 35, creating a large fan base and a multitude of creative works, fan sites, and conventions. The fan base has adopted the name Brony, a blend of bro and pony, to describe themselves. The older fan base has come as a surprise to Hasbro and staff members involved with the show, and they have appreciated and embraced the fandom, adding nods to the fans within the show and the toys. Uh, Cheryl Lynn Connolly and others have noted that bronies alienate other fans of the franchise by focusing on the fandom itself rather than the show. My Little Pony is often derided for promoting consumerism. When the media adaptations of the franchise debuted, there was much controversy in the United States about television advertising targeting at children. Relaxed regulation in the 80s on cross-referencing between programming and commercials led to toy-based shows such as Mattel's He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, Hasbro's Transformers, G.I. Joe, and later My Little Pony and Friends. And while He-Man initially drew the most controversy, My Little Pony remained controversial for many decades later, even when it was not being produced. The criticism is much more harsh and enduring than similar franchises with toy lines. Cheryl Lynn Connolly cites examples from authors and journalists who single out My Little Pony for being tied to toys and merchandise, often putting it first against the wall, while sparring such criticism from the aforementioned Hasbro franchises or franchises such as Star Wars, Toy Story, and Lego. Connolly notes that professionals who work with children, for example, psychologists and librarians, often have a positive view of the franchise, and psychologist John Roseman described My Little Pony toys as great, soothing, quiet-time toys 
having none of the violence or sexuality of other toy franchises. The first animated series is often given as the worst example of a Saturday morning cartoon, despite never airing on Saturday mornings. And even though no My Little Pony adaptation was airing on television for much of the 90s, and no toys were being produced, it was still often brought up as a contemporary example of aggressive marketing through television. Connolly contends that My Little Pony is singled out not because the franchise's business methods or content standards are particularly different from other franchises, but because it is overtly girly. Replying to criticism that My Little Pony is junk, while Star Wars sterns or stems from integrity and creative vision, cartoonist Craig McCracken noted that both franchises can have integrity or be junk, depending on how they're produced. Character designer Chris Battle pointed out that the media adaptation of My Little Pony is seen as less valid because it is aimed at girls. Director Lauren Faust, who was creative developer of the relaunch of the My Little Pony franchise in 2010, wrote that she expected people who haven't even watched the animated series to instantly label it girly, stupid, cheap, for babies, or an evil corporate commercial. Faust feels that the show's femininity makes it a target of derision, regardless of its other qualities. And Ellen Sider, professor of media studies, observed that girls' television shows are a ghettoization of girl culture, and the attacks on these shows is often aimed at their femininity. My Little Pony has been perceived as an icon of femininity and girly girls, particularly in the United Kingdom. The franchise has alternatively been described as asexual and too sexual by the UK media. And there you have it, friends. The long history, 42 years worth, of My Little Pony. Great, great background on a toy that has stood the test of time to this day, still talked about by children and adults of all types. Wonderful. I love when they bring it back and it does very well. So that's a good thing. All right, so let's take a look and see what's coming up on the next edition of Retro Toys and Games. Let's uh, look at some more girls' toys here. Let's see what we've got. Uh, uh, no, okay. All right. Whoops. So that's okay. I'm going to do a list of. I was going to do the list of toys and games too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh no! <laughs> I don't want that. Beep beep. <laughs> okay. All right. List of toys. Here we go. So we've done Army Men. And we've done GI Joe, which was good. We've done He Man. But we have not done Kenner's Star Wars action figures. Yes. This is going to be the big one right here. And this will probably take next week and take it next week into a two part series. Probably not, depending. Well, it looks pretty good. I think we can do it in one, in one show. But we're going to do Kenner's Star Wars action figures on episode number 53 of Jay's Retro Toys and Games. Hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you uh, next Wednesday. Let you know what's going on then. And don't forget, also, too, I've got some major announcements coming up for the weekend, and I'll let you know on uh, the Legends of Smooth Jazz what's going on and the Legacy of Queens. Uh, we'll be back-to-back -back shows. We'll have it on Saturday and Sunday for both shows. So there's two shows that you're going to be able to see. The Legends of Smooth Jazz, The Legacy of Queens, both on Saturday and Sunday starting this weekend. I'm Jason DiCanio. Remember, always be honest, be real, and keep it simple, stupid. Kiss. We'll see you on Wednesday. Have a great weekend. Bye for now.
Don't forget to subscribe to the Demon Thousand Network for great more content like this one.